you really do have to monitor your job site. Anyway, we're talking about soil. So we got to get the, not only the right kind of soil in here, but the right volume. The right volume to get across here. Because right now in this phase one, we're doing an earthen retaining wall. Phase two may include gabions, but we can have, uh, depending on the soil type, they'll know for sure whether we can have an erosion stable back lot here. Now this back lot's gonna come around, cut across here, and extend the back of this other property. They're still doing some excavation. They're gonna bring a bulldozer for that kind of stuff. Uh, this, this machine is primarily for taking down the trees and, and calling the logs. They're not getting as quality log as, as we like, um, but that's, that's a factor of the age of the trees. That's a factor of the, the conditions. You can see that one down there in the hole. You can see some of the crooked ones down there, some of the Ys, uh, like a giant slingshot, that one in the center frame. Um, but the quality of the log isn't where it needs to be to get top dollar for this. This isn't a break-even project. Uh, you can see a couple of them are scraggly looking. Some of these logs were saved in, in order to use as underneath the excavators and the stuff that come through here. But ultimately, this is a no-burn site. These, this wood will not be burned. In fact, it will be compacted and buried so we can use the biomass. We can capture that carbon to grow soil like the soil we have up here in this bed. If you've seen the other video about this particular bed here, uh, this is the result. That dark streak you've got there was a nursery bed. And that is the result of a hugel culture. That is the result, I know hugel culture, who knows what that is. I'll tell you that about that in another video. But that is the result of cultivating the soil to have that biologically diverse material. It's a combination of quite a few things that we're gonna model back here. But you can see the forest floor already has that biology. All we did was mimicked the forest floor. So once this, this structural material comes in, yes sir, hey, thank you. Once this structural material comes in, it's gonna help us build that platform to the other side. Then we'll come back and over top of that material, we're gonna put in layers of, of rotten wood chips, cover crops, and probably in a year or so, we'll have a variety of trees. Now, ideally, uh, under, that, under that excavator, there is a kind of a, a, a land bridge. Ideally, we'll have another land bridge a little higher. I let the, the excavators make that decision. They know what they're doing, but there was an old nasty retaining wall that was, was on the verge of falling down, and now we've got progress. We've got a lot of progress that's going to help us uh, restore this area. So you can see there's kind of two tiers here. Uh, and the second tier they'll start building into, they'll start drawing the soil down the hill. This soil will come on down the hill and it will fill in this space. Now again, I'm just grabbing this with my phone. This is part of what you're going to do when you're managing a project like this, just to maintain the job site, to know what's going on, and to stay on top of the, the progress of things. Now there's talk about taking some of the trees down on the bottom that are near the property line, anything that was damaged in storms, anything that is the potential to fall over and reach the bottom uh, land bridge. Where I'm calling them a land bridge now. Uh, they're not dams, they don't hold the water. All they do is slow the water down. Now you might be asking, should I be concerned about all this debris that's ending up in the hole? I, I could be concerned about it. I could pay somebody to come out here and pull it all out. Uh, I have a full-time job. Some of it's going in the hole. Now they're doing a great job of picking some out and we've sent some to the dump, but most of it is going in the hole, underground, and it will stay there for eternity. Uh, because as this hill is, is cultivated over time, um, I will be putting more and more layers of this clay to build out structure. And uh, before that, I will be pushing all of the, if you can imagine, all of the uh, topsoil getting pushed up more soil coming in across here to build this up and then the topsoil put back on in a quick growing cover cover crop see we've got to build up the structure i'm looking for for resale value for use of the property for um just the the the, the access to the back of the house that you know imagine getting a ladder up on that gutter the way it was before it's just not going to happen i want to make sure there's access all the way to my neighbor's house so he doesn't have to bring anything through his front yard in order to get there, it's going to take a large tier. So, yeah, I'm a little concerned when they can pull it out, they pull it out. But if uh, some things get buried in the hole, we're just going to have to live with that. Uh, we're going to keep it on the property. Just like all this wood, we haul off, they haul off everything that can be used, everything that can be sold, everything that can even be used for pulp. 
and everything else stays on the property. It's being sustainably buried, capture all that carbon, put it in the ground. This is the modern forestry method. And then on top of it, uh, we, we're gonna, they've already given me some ideas about how to manage the water, but on top of it, we're gonna then uh, use fill and have that area uh, full. Now, now you might be saying, well, Justin, wouldn't the wood break down and cause a sinkhole in your backyard? Well, yeah, it would, but nothing's going to be back here except flower beds and permanent uh, garden beds. Uh, this whole permaculture thing is about getting the most from the land, but being flexible with nature, understanding nature. Now, we'll build some, we're going to have a plenty area out here to put uh, birds. Uh, so we'll have uh, different bird houses and bat houses and stuff in different areas. May even have bees. Um, but this area down in the bottom, because of the structure of the land, will continue to receive a lot of water. In fact, in the initial phases, the water from all the gutters is gonna come down here into the center and there'll be a small detention pond because we don't want that water running over the property. We don't want it retrenching out the property. If you look at some of my older videos where I'm out running in the woods like a fool, um, you'll see how poorly this land holds water. We're changing that with this hoogle. We're gonna keep that soil we're going to keep that water. We're going to keep it on this property. Not only keep it on this property, is I'm going to put it into productive use, and we're going to capture volumes and volumes of carbon. Now, the weather's broken a little bit here. Um, we may have some more truckloads come in, so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, if you are trying to manage a project like this, if you've got an idea that you can improve your land, consider attending our uh, land projects program. Uh, we talk specifically about project management as it ap appeals and uh, complements this kind of activity. And we actually have a dump truck coming in, so I'm going to wrap this up. There should be a link below where you can ask your questions, and we'll cover more in, uh, in future videos. I want to thank you for watching. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead.